So we got Snoop D O Double G here. He's decided to vault the ceilings in his living room because they just ain't high enough. He wants a little more space up there, you know, wants it to feel spacious, open. He likes wide open spaces there, you know what I'm saying? So he knows the pitch of his roof is an 812, and the new ceiling pitch will be 412. The length of the current roof rafter from the ridge to the wall is 22 feet. So this length is 22 feet. How long will he need to cut the boards to frame this up? And one other thing is this uh, middle stud right here, that'll be right in the middle, okay? Just like we had the last in one of the other videos. So this splits it right down the middle, right? So this is um, 11 feet and 11 feet. Cool. All right. So... We want to find out all of our, our board lengths. That's not one of the board lengths. It's just a measurement here that we have. Um, but we want to figure out uh, what to cut this ceiling rafter at, right? That's going to be at a 412 pitch. We want to know the king rafter. We need to know this middle. Or sorry, the king stud and the middle stud. And then also this guy right here. Okay. Well, let's see what we can do. We're going to do a mix of right triangle and non-right triangle trick here. It's a great review for both. Um, I, I wouldn't have you do something like this completely on your own, quite this complicated, but it's an excellent review of uh, all things trig. So let's get triggy with it, okay? Let's think, think about what we could figure out right now. Well, I did do a problem earlier, we did a problem earlier, where we found out this angle right in here. And we did that with our roof pitches. Well, what would my angle be of an 812 roof pitch? Well, how could I figure that out? The tangent inverse of my slope, my 8 over 12, my rise over my run, right? My tangent inverse of that would give me my angle. So if I do the tangent inverse of 8 over 12, I would get about 33.69, so 33.7 degrees. And I can do the same with the 412. And that'll be 18.43. So we'll say 18.4 about. Okay, so those are my two angles of, of, uh, of each one of these rafters. So this one's going up here at a... Uh, at a 33.7 degree angle, this one at an 18.4. So what's this angle in here? Well, if I were to subtract the two of them, so if I took 33.7 minus 18.4, or if I do it in my TI-84, I can keep it very, very accurate. I'll get 15.255-1187 if I use the numbers from before without rounding. So we end up getting 15.3 roughly. So this angle, Right here is 15.3 degrees. All right. Um, I wonder if I can figure out any of my other angles. Hmm. How about this angle up top? I want to uh, refer back to my angle of the roof rafter. It's 33.7, meaning it's going up at a 33.7 degree angle. So the angle that this makes with the, let's say the ground or with the ceiling, the old ceiling, was 33.7. So this angle up here ends up being our complement of that. What does it mean to be a complement? Well, it's got to add up to 90. So how do I figure out that one? Well, if I subtract that from 90, what do I get? I get 56.3 degrees. So this angle is 56.3 degrees. Okay. And how many degrees are in a triangle? And the reason why I'm asking that is I could figure out what this angle is right in here. Well, there's 180 degrees in a triangle, right? So if I take 56.3 plus my 15.3 and I subtract that from 180, the total degrees in a triangle, I will get 108.4. And why are all three of these angles important? Well, let's start with this one, the 108.4. That is across from the 22 feet. 
So in my triangle here, I've got a, a length and then an opposite angle or an angle and its opposite side length. That allows me to set up some law of sines. And I can use these other two angles to figure out their opposite sides. I think it's time for a super proportion. A proportion of super proportions, epic proportions rather. Let's call it an epic proportion. That sounds cooler. So I have my sine of 108.4 with its opposite side is equal to the sine of 56.3 over its opposite side. We'll call this x. And then our sine of 15.3 over its opposite side, the king stud, we'll call that our y. So our x is our ceiling rafter, our y is our king stud. Now we can just go ahead and math it up. Let's do it. I'm going to cross multiply. So I'm going to have sine of 108 sine of 108.4 times x, right? So I got x sine of 108 equals 22 times sine of sine of 56.3. Okay. And then to solve for x, I'm going to divide by sine of 108.4. So if I do that in my calculator, um, these aren't terrible to do in your phone calculators. I'd still suggest doing it in your uh, TI-84. So I got 22 times sine of 56.3 divided by the sine of 108.4. And we get that x is approximately 19.289, so about 19.3. And our answers aren't going to be exact because we have been rounding along the way. That's feet. Okay. So that would be my, uh, my ceiling rafter, right? 19.3 feet. It's a little shorter than the 22. That makes sense. All right. Um, cool. All right. So I've got that part. How about my... Uh, what about my, my king stud? Well, let's solve the other one. So if I cross multiply that one, and here I am focusing on this part of the proportion and this part, making my own side proportion. So let's go ahead and shrink this stuff down so we have a little more room to work and we can still reference it. Um, let's set up my new proportion of epic proportions. So we have the sine of 108.4 over 22. That's my known information. Got it all on that one. And then I've got sine of, in this case, 15.3, since we're solving for that other side, over y. When I cross multiply, uh, I end up in my calculator typing in 22 times sine of 15.3 and dividing that by sine of 108.4 and I end up with y equaling approximately 6.117 so about 6.1 feet cool alrighty and once again that that makes sense I've done some of these problems where I'm like wait what the heck was that that doesn't make any sense that side's too large and I realized, you know, maybe my calculator was in radians. We don't want that. We want our calculator in degrees. If you hit mode, choose degree, not radian. It's like this third option down. All right. So I've got uh, some wonderful information here. I've got my, uh, my king stud. I'm going to toss that off to the side. All right. Now we need some other stuff here. Let's, let's see here. Let's assign some more variables, shall we? Why don't we call this middle guy Z? Whoa, I don't want a highlighter type. I want this. If we call that Z. Well, do you guys remember uh, one of the other problems? We were dealing with a rafter like this when it was halfway down. This created similar triangles, right? I had this triangle here. Oop, this triangle right here. 
and then its larger triangle, there's similar triangles, and if this was halfway down, which we already stated, it's going to be half the length of this one. That makes my life very easy. If I just take 6.1 and I divide it by 2, I end up with 3.058. So I'm going to say uh, for Z here, it's going to be Z, oops, Z. equals about 3.05. I'm going to do two decimal places just so it makes a little more sense. You know, with the 6.1, half of that, you'd have the 0 0.05 there, right? All right, so that made that easy. I mean, I could trig it all out. I could do the same type of thing we just did, but with 11 as my length, still the 108.4 here is my angle because it is the same as this one. Right? It's just I'm using 11 instead of 22. Everything else is the same, and I'll end up getting half the length. All right. Now, lastly, I want, we'll call this, I guess, uh, what letter should we go with? How about, how about Q W? That sounds like fun. W, X, Y, and Z, the last four letters of the alphabet. Why wouldn't we go with that? So I'm going to figure out the length of that one right there. That last piece of the puzzle for framing up this wonderful vaulted ceiling for Snoop D-O-double-G. Snoop Doggy Dog. Okay. Well, I've got all sorts of stuff here, but this one is different than everything. As this right here, this angle is a right angle. And I'm going to draw that in with a green marker. That is a right, not the whole thing, but that right there. That is a right angle, right? The 108.4 was the entire angle there, but just that portion of there, that is a right angle. Let's draw this triangle off to the side. I've got this, that, boom. Got a right angle. This is the W that we've labeled. This right here we knew was 11 because it was half, right? Um, and I've got some information about the different angles, this one up here, we knew is 50 as 56.3. We figured that out earlier when trying to set up some law of sines action. So I've got an angle. I've got a side. Can I figure out that W there? This goes back to some Sokotoa action. If I'm looking at that angle, what side is my W? My W is my opposite side. And then my 11 is my hypotenuse. The reason being, it's across from my right angle. Well, what trig function uses opposite and hypotenuse? Remember, we've got so, ka, toa. This one right here has opposite and hypotenuse, so I'm using the sine of my angle equals my opposite, which is W, over my hypotenuse, which is 11. To solve, I'm just going to multiply by 11. I can type all that into my calculator. And I get W equals 9.15. Boom. Feet. And that is my last of the dimensions that I needed from this awesome Framing up of the vaulted ceilings for Snoop D O double G. Woo! That was uh, that was intense. Again, wouldn't have you guys do something quite this crazy all on your own, maybe as a group. Um, but we know all of this math, right? This this is all stuff that we are responsible for. It's just a lot of it all together, which gets a little bit scary solving for all these different pieces of the puzzle. But we have the capabilities to do this now. Or at least we should have the capabilities to do all of this. You know what I'm saying? America, freedom, rock and roll.